Well, me for now, though, it's all about this. <laughs> Formula One, of course, coming towards a conclusion. Max Verstappen, already champion. Noni Edwards, though she's still loving it. She's here <laughs> for her post-race F1 catch-up. It's a new thing. We've been rolling this out over the last few weeks. Late one on Sunday night. Noni, the US Grand Prix from the circuit of the Americas. But Noni, the biggest news from Austin, Texas. It happened overnight. It wasn't that Max won again. It was the two post-race disqualifications. What the heck do we need to know about this? What happened? Oh... Where do we start? Okay, so we woke up in the morning after a very, very late one on Sunday night. Did you stay up? Uh, Be honest. I had a little bit of a nap beforehand. <laughs> Set the alarm. Good on you. That's the profession. I'm a you. shift worker. I, I know when to sleep. I know when to be up. Good on you. But it was those two post-race qualifications. Oh, it was huge. I mean, in the morning, you know, we're looking at our phones and suddenly... Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc, two of the biggest names from second place and sixth place, were disqualified for an identical technical fault. It was really quite strange. So Hamilton finished in second place and no sooner had we all <laughs> hit the sack, the stewards launched an investigation into his Mercedes. Now, what they found is that he failed a floor inspection. Brilliant. Now... <laughs> You as want if me he's to get a in building for goodness sake. <laughs> it's you like want the foundations weren't right. You wanted me to get into the nitty gritty, yeah, didn't I do, you? I do. Okay, okay. So worn skid plates <laughs> is what it is. Underneath the cars, there's a little block of wood, I believe it actually is, that was too worn. This block of wood is there to guarantee a minimum floor height, a minimum distance between the base of the car and the very, very bumpy track in Austin. And in these two particular cars, they were so worn away that they no longer met regulation and were thus disqualified. Amazing that. Lewis Hamilton, what is he, seven time, of course, seeking an eighth, seven time world champion, disqualified. And it was his best performance. Now, there will be those that oh. say, you know, partly the reason he might have performed as well is because the skid block was worn down. But I'm not having I that. I don't think for so. One I second. mean, of all the discussion, you cannot try no. to cheat by no. having a worn block of wood. Do you want to hear more about yeah. this, this block? Okay. So, Matt Q is Autosports F1 editor. He explains why the teams perhaps weren't as across their technical setups this weekend as normal and how the conditions in Texas affect. That. What we have is um, sprint race format here in Austin. So you get one 60 minute practice session before Park Ferme rules come into effect. So that means after that, you're very limited with what setup changes you can make. And they've experienced Austin, which is significantly bumpier than last year. And that's despite resurfacing turns 12, 14, 15, 16. Uh, but because it's so much bumpier and they've only had a limited window to get their setup, some of them have got it wrong. Basically, we're running too low. So over the bumps, uh, there's big compressions and they're grounding out and they've worn away the plan which has a certain tolerance of, and they've exceeded that. So both drivers, both teams, in fact, they've copped it on the chin. They've yeah. taken responsibility. There are no appeals to a, a very clear technical disqualification. However, there were four teams, uh, there were four cars tested. Two of them failed. Here's Matt Q again talking about why that is so controversial. Uh, it's really not a black and white issue for, for me personally. So um, four cars have been tested, two compliant, two not, two have been disqualified. So that means there's 16 cars that haven't been tested. So we do have a case where potentially eight illegal cars have been promoted into a points position. That opens up a grey area, a bit of a can of worms, really. That's a farce. <laughs> that is a farce. Poor old Lewis can't do anything right this season, no, he can can't. he? He wants the back end. He of the can't season. catch he wants, a break. He wants to be in Abu Dhabi tomorrow, and he wants the you know the the confetti in the air. Well done, Max. See you later. I'm getting off on my holidays, and I'm back next year. Next year, next year, yeah. next year, next year. We got that. Why was Max booed at the prize giving What's presentation? He? I heard a theory that they were actually booing the mayor of Austin. Ah. Who was presenting that? the trophy to him? Oh, okay. <laughs> so well, wasn't. perhaps because there are a lot of Sergio Perez yes, fans in that Austin. Too. There's a big uh, Hispanic Latino community. Hispanic, yeah. um, they were huge. Did but you... Max is a very popular driver wherever he goes. So I, I was. Yeah, I'm with no surprised this. by that. He may well have been the mayor. Just not happy with the mayor. I don't what, know, what but yeah. Doing. Interesting. Uh, what about Lewis? He was obviously disappointed, no one's in. But, hey, listen, take nothing away from that disappointment. Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton, a really, really good performance. That was a sensational drive. I mean, 
Before we went to sleep, before the disqualifications, those final few laps, Lewis was chasing Max. He was hunting him down. He was gaining on him every lap. And Max was rattled too. He was swearing at his race engineer, GP. He was saying, please don't lose. talk to me while I'm braking. <laughs> no, he was he was under pressure. And yeah, he definitely, uh, Lewis had his measure there. We wanted just a little bit more of that this season. But hey-ho, it's coming at the back end. Let's mm. hope the Mercedes actually for uh, the next one, which I believe we're, where are we? we're in Mexico for yes. the next one. Let's hope the Mercedes bring that. Uh, in terms of the result from the weekend then, with Lewis Hamilton disqualified from second, Charles Leclerc disqualified from sixth, what impact did that have? What were the big storylines from that? Okay, so uh, McLaren's Lando Norris was promoted up into second place still. Hasn't got himself a, a, a first place yet. Uh, Carlos Sainz of Ferrari was handed the third place trophy. He's on the podium. Now, another winner of the day, <laughs> Alpha Tauri's Yuki Tsunoda. He managed to snag the fastest lap in what is arguably the, the least, least yeah. competitive car on, on the grid. He was called in to change to some faster soft tyres on the last lap. But as he tells it, he had no idea what was happening. <laughs> To be honest, I got a heart attack uh, last <laughs> lap when uh, when they called me uh, into the pit and you know they, they said you let's go for a faster lap and then I a little bit relieved but at the same time I got a bit extra pressure because um, I never done like this uh, thing so you know I I feel kind of thrilling uh, but at the same time I enjoyed it, enjoyed that fresh tire. <laughs> Love. So, I mean, that's a thing. Often, you know, they will change onto soft tyres. If they can't get a, a place that they wanted, they'll change onto the soft tyres. They'll sacrifice a position potentially, but get a point for for fastest lap. But he'd never done that before, so he didn't know what was going on. Uh, he managed to gain two places. He finished in, in he originally finished in 10th. He moved up into 8th. He scored five championship points there for Alpha Tari. Yeah, good one, Yuki. And... Um, American Logan Sargent, he earned his first ever single championship point at his home race in Austin, Texas. So good on him too. Yeah, he's celebrating six hours after the fact, which is a bit... <laughs> in terms, they were the winners then. In terms of the losers from this week? Oh, uh, look, double demerit points to Aston Martin's Lance Stroll, who's been condemned for his off-track behaviour. Have you have you heard about this, Robbie? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have, yes. Yeah, he's been uh, definitely not gentlemanly. Uh, I mean, he does seem to be under a bit of pressure. He had a really bad run of form, hadn't scored any points in five races, and there are rumours that Daddy Lawrence Stroll is going to sell the team in the that, season. Yeah, that, uh, that he drives for. However, no excuses. He got a formal reprimand from the FIA, the governing body this week, for throwing his steering wheel out of the car and shoving his trainer, Henry Howe, when... How he tried to he tried to he tried to steer him towards the mandatory weigh-in station and he pushed him. <laughs> oh, I need to see this. I haven't seen this. That's yeah. a bit naughty. So he got a, a formal so reprimand there. He's just... he's not anyone's no. favourite driver at the moment. He needs to pull his head in. And the, 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 the kind of buzz in the paddock is that will he be gone? Will we see Lance next season? I mean, if Lawrence Stroll sells the team, he, he's had a he's had an automatically rolling contract there because Daddy owns the team. Yeah, he's he's definitely not uh, at Alonso's stage. His teammate Fernando Alonso. Watch this piece. Yeah, I, I want to, if I may, bridge the gap between F1 and golf. Never thought I'd say this. Okay, but there is a link <laughs> from the U.S. Grand Prix because Rory McIlroy was there. He's parading the Ryder Cup trophy and Lording Rory has bought into the Alpine team. He's joined a consortium along with Anthony Joshua, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Juan Mata. What a quartet that is. <laughs> they have been announced as part of a £173 million strategic investment led by consortium group Otro Capital in Alpine. Rory is eyeing up a miniature stake in Manchester United if he can I, get his I, hands on it. I'm led to believe that, of course, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhinney, who, of course, own Wrexham Football Club, they've already invested in Alpine as well. So watch this space. A little bit of celebrity, a little bit of... part of the paddle? Is it paddle, the one that they're all buying into as well? Paddle's a sport that is growing, no, we know that. But no, it's I, I the other one. Aware. It's yeah. the other one that I can't remember. Pickleball. Pickleball, oh, yeah. Pickleball. <laughs> the celebrity-owned Yeah, a lot of people franchise. buying into that as well. In terms of the F1 roadshow, it is off to Mexico. Off to Mexico next week. Uh, yeah, Sergio Perez. He's... Weekend off, then the following week. 
or are we in Mexico? We've got, now? we're in the we fir- we've just had the first of three in a triple header. Uh, yeah, so Sergio's home race next week. He's he usually goes very well at it. He usually has a lot of support. Obviously, some are saying it could be his swan song. <sighs> Interesting. I'm looking forward to this. Mexico, Brazil, then Las Vegas. Yep. All eyes on Sin City. And then here in Abu Dhabi. Indeed, we finish off in Abu Dhabi. Noni Edwards, always a pleasure. We will catch Thank up. Thank you so much. Back to back races. We'll see you same time next week. Noni Edwards from the ARN News Centre.